Hey guys, this is Alec, and like I said, I'm going to be doing NFL predictions for every NFL week. They won't all be in this video, but as the week comes up, I'm going to be doing predictions for that week. I'm also going to be having a game of the week in it for what I think will be the best matchup, but because uh, it's the start of the season, I'm going to pick the first game to be the first game of the week. Now... I'm not going to go very in-depth into why I think they will win, but when I get a game wrong in the next video, when I say why I got certain games wrong, I probably will go into more depth of why I got that one wrong based off of the in-game performance of players. All right, now the game of the week, New Orleans at Green Bay. I just feel that Green Bay has better defense than New Orleans, and because they both have strong offenses, but Green Bay has better defense that Green Bay is going to edge out New Orleans in Lambeau Field. Next is Atlanta at Chicago. I don't think that Jay Cutler will be good this season, even though he, they uh, have gotten Roy Williams to add at wide receiver, though I don't understand why they put him at the number one position on the depth chart. But anyway, I feel that Michael Turner is going to be able to not necessarily run over Chicago, but create enough of an in uh, of a imbalance to allow better passing game because Matt Ryan will have Tony Gonzalez to pass to a tight end, Roddy White a wide receiver, as well as Julio Jones who they got in the draft. So I think that Atlanta is going to be able to beat Chicago because while Chicago does have a bit better of a defense. Their offense is nowhere near where it needs to be. Max is Cleveland and Cincinnati. Cincinnati lost Carson Palmer. They have, don't really have many good receivers. They don't really have a good defense. They're not very strong in their running game. I see Cleveland beating them because Colt McCoy looked very promising in the preseason. Peyton Hillis couldn't put up another surprising season. And Joshua Cribbs could... He could end up doing good this season, helping Colt McCoy. Next, Kansas City at Buffalo. Both teams are not going to do good this season. I know Kansas City won their division, but their defense did not look good at all in the preseason. It it was very, very... This, it was not right. I, I wanted to cry. It was that bad. And I'm not even a KC fan. I'm, I'm a Chargers fan. And their defense was so bad, it, it brought me to tears. No, it didn't. Just trying to get a point across. But anyway. Buffalo had the worst rushing defense last season. Because of that, Kansas City having dual backs in Thomas Jones, the uh, backup, and Jamal Charles, who led the league in rushes per attempt last season. Not rushes per attempt. Yards per attempt. Rushes per attempt is... Not, wow, uh, and yards per attempt with over six, I think that they'll be able to run over them with two different players, which will help because then one player is not getting overtired, and they still have Dexter McCluster and Dwayne Bowe to pass to, and Matt Castle could do good against Buffalo's uh, passing defense, so I see Kansas City winning this one at home. Next is Philly and St. Louis. While I don't feel Philly will end up being the dream team come the end of the season, I don't think St. Louis is good enough to, to edge out Philly. I feel Philly's offense is much stronger than St. Louis's offense. And while uh, the rushing defense for Philly did not look too good, their secondary is amazing. And I don't think Steven Jackson could run over Philly and I don't think Sam Bradford is good enough to pass around the likes of Nomdi Asamoah, Asante Samuel, uh, Dominique Rogers, Cromarty. I just don't think he's at that point yet, though I think he does have the potential of getting there in the next few seasons. The next game was probably the hardest one to pick, but I'm going to have to give Detroit the win over Tampa Bay. I know that Tampa Bay is an extremely efficient passer in Josh Freeman, but that's just it. 
they're going to have to pass that game with Josh Freeman, with Detroit having one of the best D lines in the entire league. And I don't think that Josh Freeman will be able to do good enough against Detroit to pass around their secondary. While Detroit has Javid Best back and they can try to be productive in the running game. And they have Calvin Johnson, known as Megatron, and Matthew Stafford back. He's healthy and looked great in the preseason. So I feel that if Stafford can stay healthy the entire season, Detroit could do really well. And they're going to start in week one by beating Tampa Bay. Next, Tennessee and Jacksonville. With the recent uh, being cut of David Garrard and Tennessee re-signing Johnson. Fi- well, not re-signing. Contract negotiations. And then going Johnson's way. He still had two years left on his contract. But anyway, with that contract being signed now, Johnson will be playing in the season opener, though his carries could be limited. But I think he'll be able to run over Jacksonville enough in his carries that Tennessee is going to end up beating Jacksonville because I don't think Luke McCown will do good enough at quarterback to get a good passing game going. And I feel Tennessee will be able to do enough on offense to outscore MJD for uh from what he would be doing for Jacksonville. So yeah, I'm gonna give this one to Tennessee. Next is Pittsburgh and Baltimore. These teams both have great defense, but Pittsburgh has the better offense. They can pass and they can run. Well and uh lately Joe Flacco has been getting a lot of flack. He's a quarterback of Baltimore, but he's been getting a lot of flack for not doing enough in the passing game. And with Ray Rice only having five touchdowns last season rushing I don't think that they will be able to do much offensively against Pittsburgh. Next is Houston and Indy. With the recent news that Peyton Manning had third surgery on his neck, I feel that they will not be good at all with Kerry Collins starting. They already don't have a running game. They don't have the best defense. Even though Houston may not have Arian Foster, Ben Tate looked promising in the offseason. Well, not the offseason, the preseason. There wasn't much of an offseason because of the lockout. But I feel that the passing game will definitely be there for Houston with Matt Schaub and Andre Johnson. But even if they can't get the running game going with Ben Tate if Arian doesn't play, I don't think Indianapolis will be there offensively on this on their season opener. Next is Carolina at Arizona. I'm going to give this one to Carolina, but not because they have Cam Newton, but because I think they did a good job in the offseason getting veterans, like Greg Olson, for example, re-signing D'Angelo Williams. Now, I feel that they'll be able to not necessarily pass over, as I don't think Cam Newton is developed enough to be a great passer this season, but I do feel that they will do enough running the ball and whatever they do passing against Arizona. Because I don't think Kevin Cobb is as good as people are making him out to be. He started 14 games, only 7-7 seven and seven as a starter, if I'm correct. And they only really have one target in Larry Fitzgerald. While he may be the best wide receiver in the league, he's their only really good wide receiver. The other thing is, Arizona lost Tim Hightower at running back, so they only have to rely on Beanie Wells, who did not do good at all in the few games he was able to play in last season. And, with losing Dominique rogers Cromartie, that could affect the passing game, which could help Cam Newton in his first game. So, I'm going to have to give this one to Carolina. Next, San Diego and Minnesota. Well, I think that Donovan McNabb could actually end up doing good for Minnesota, and they have Adrian Peterson. I don't think that they will be able to beat San Diego because San Diego had number one defense last season, number one in uh, receiving defense, and number four in rushing. And even though Phillip Rivers had most of his wide receiver uh, targets out for at least uh, 25% of the season, they're all back now. And Ryan Matthews is healthy, which will give them a lot of depth uh, wide receiver, they'll be able to run with Mike Tolbert and Ryan Matthews now again, and their defense is already amazing, they got to Keo Spikes, a middle linebacker, so I can see San Diego having a good season, 
But I think it is going to be a close game, Minnesota and San Diego, because uh, the last time AP played San Diego, it was bad for San Diego. Very, very bad. Extremely, extremely bad. Look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about. San Diego versus Minnesota, Adrian Peterson. It was not pretty for San Diego. I'm saying that a lot, but it's true. It was not pretty. But I don't think Minnesota will do enough passing. San Diego is finally very strong defensively. So I'm giving this to San Diego, especially with all the targets being back for Rivers. Next is Seattle and San Francisco. I feel that Traveris Jackson is extremely underrated. He has started, he may have only started six games since 2008 and played in 19, but in the games he's played, in, he's actually done very, very well. In 2008, he had a 59.1% completion rating. In 2009, that jumped up to 66.7 and 67.9 in 2010. While they may have only been on 21 and 28 uh, attempts, for 9 and 10, he's still managed to get a very, very good passer rating. In 2009, it was 113.4. In 2010, it was 87.9. But here's the thing people are not looking at. He had 13 touchdowns to 5 interceptions from 2008 to 2010 in the 19 games he played and the six games he started. So I think that the first few weeks he'll do very, very well. Well, not very, very well, but I think he'll do pretty well. I don't know how it will continue throughout the season because the only time he started more than five games in a season was in 2007 when he had a pass rating of 70.8 and only average 160 yards a game. And to add on to that, he only played in the games he started, so it's not that he did not start in other games and got minimal attempts, which brought down his yards per game. He played 12 games and started those 12, and only averaged 159.3 yards per game. Because of that, I don't know how he will manage throughout the full season, but in the beginning, I do think he will do pretty well for Seattle, especially with Marshawn Lynch. They can do some running and get the play action in. Next is the Giants versus Washington. Washington does not have a good quarterback. They may have gotten Tim Hightower, who can do some promising things for them, but Washington also doesn't have a defense, which only gives them a running game. The Giants have a pretty good quarterback in Manning. They got Ahmad, uh, not Ahmad Bradshaw, Brandon Jacobs back, and they have a pretty good defense. I see the Giants crushing Washington. Just destroying them, mauling them. And the next New York team, the Jets, are going to be going against Dallas. Well, Felix Jones looks like he could have a great season. He won't start in week one. The Jets have too strong of a defense to let Felix Jones do that. With Dallas losing Roy Williams to the Chicago Bears, their two targets, really, are Des Bryant and Miles Austin. I don't think that they have enough depth at wide receiver to get a strong passing game against the Jets while they have Darrell Rivas on, and Antonio Cromartie. So because the Jets have that huge defensive advantage to Dallas' offense, I feel that the Jets will edge out Dallas. Next is New England at Miami. Miami doesn't... I mean, Chad Henney's not a good quarterback. He's okay, but he's not good enough. New England has Tom Brady. They have Wes Walker, wide receiver. They recently got Chad Ochocinco. They have depth at wide receiver. They also have depth at running back with Danny Woodhead and Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. They are going to do very well against this Miami team. And the final game is Denver and Oakland. I do not like Kyle Orton as a quarterback, and Denver has no running game. And they also have a terrible defense. They had the second worst rushing defense in the league. Oakland may not have a quarterback either, but they at least can run the ball with Darren McFadden. I think Darren McFadden will be able to do enough running the game against Denver 
to be able to beat them at Invesco at mile high. So let's just do a quick recap and I'll let you guys get on with your day. Green Bay will beat New Orleans. Atlanta is going to beat Chicago. Cleveland will beat Cincinnati. Kansas City will beat Buffalo. Philly will beat St. Louis. Detroit will beat Tampa Bay. Tennessee is going to beat Jacksonville. Pittsburgh will beat Baltimore. Houston will beat Indianapolis. Carolina will beat Arizona. San Diego will beat Minnesota. Seattle will beat San Francisco. Washington will lose to the Giants. I switched it up there. Ha, got you. Started with the losing team. Jets will beat Dallas. New England will beat Miami. And Oakland is going to beat Denver. That is what I think will happen. Week one in the NFL. So, tell me what you thought of my predictions down below. And if you think I did a bad job picking a game, let me know why. I like to get others input. And maybe you'll make me realize something that I didn't realize, which is why you would make me realize it. That's not a good reason, because you would make me realize it. Just tell me why you think, if you think I got a game wrong, or will get it wrong, why you think I will be wrong. I can get other people's input then, and then it can help me predict games better throughout the season. So, this has been Alec Rivard. Well, I still am Alec Rivard. Anyway, like this video if you like the NFL. Give it the thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my NFL predictions or other videos I'll be doing, like my vlogs, hit the subscribe button. It lets me know that you want to watch my videos, and that makes me happy. It makes me smile inside and outside. It lo it looks weird sometimes, kind of creepy, makes children cry. It's true. Anyway, this is Alec, and I'll see you guys later.